Good morning guys, Joey here with Valiant Liege coming at you from a beautiful 12 degree day in my neck of the woods, sun is shining. Gonna get a little stretch in, a little tight. Long day on my feet yesterday, so yeah, just a nice little easy stretch, enjoying uh, the beauties of nature, the birds behind me, uh, the birds chirping. Um, so yeah, oh, and also gonna continue listening to um, the Book of Five Rings by Vox Stoica. Um, go check them out. Enjoy. If you master the principles of sword fencing, when you freely beat one man, you beat any man in the world. The spirit of defeating a man is the same for ten million men. The strategist makes small things into big things, like building a great Buddha from a one-foot model. I cannot write in detail how this is done, the principle of strategy is having one thing to know 10,000 things. Things of Ichi school are written in this, the water book. Third is the fire book. This book is about fighting. The spirit of fire is fierce, whether the fire be small or big, and so it is with battles. The way of battles is the same for man-to-man -man fights and for 10,000 aside battles. You must appreciate that spirit can become big or small. What is big is easy to perceive. What is small is difficult to perceive. In short, it is difficult for large numbers of men to change position, so their movements can be easily predicted. An individual can easily change his mind, so his movements are difficult to predict. You must appreciate this. The essence of this book, is that you must train day and night in order to make quick decisions. In strategy, it is necessary to treat training as a part of normal life, with your spirit unchanging. Thus, combat in battle is described in the Fire Book. Fourthly, the Wind Book. This book is not concerned with my Ichi school, but with other schools of strategy. By wind, I mean old traditions, present-day traditions, and family traditions of strategy. Thus, I clearly explain the strategies of the world. This is tradition. It is difficult to know yourself if you do not know others. To all ways, there are sidetracks. If you study a way daily and your spirit diverges, you may think you are obeying a good way, but objectively, it is not the true way. If you are following the true way and diverge a little, this will later become a large divergence. You must realize this. Other strategies have come to be thought of as mere sword fencing, and it is not unreasonable that this should be so. The benefit of my strategy, although it includes sword fencing, lies in a separate principle. I have explained what is commonly meant by strategy in other schools in the tradition, wind. Fifthly, the Book of the Void. By void, I mean that which has no beginning and no end. Attaining this principle means not attaining the principle. The way of strategy is the way of nature. When you appreciate the power of nature, knowing the rhythm of any situation, you will be able to hit the enemy naturally and strike naturally. All this is the way of the void. I intend to show how to follow the true way according to nature in the Book of the Void. The name Ichiryu Nito, One School, Two Swords. Warriors, both commanders and troopers, carry two swords at their belt. In olden times, these were called the Long Sword and the Sword. Nowadays, they are known as the Sword and the Companion Sword. Let it suffice to say that in our land, whatever the reason, a warrior carries two swords at his belt. It is the way of the warrior. Nito Ichiryu shows the advantage of using both swords. The spear and halberd are weapons that are carried out of doors. Students of the Ichi school way of strategy should train from the start with a sword and longsword in either hand. This is the truth. When you sacrifice your life, you must make fullest use of your weaponry. It is false not to do so, and to die with a weapon yet undrawn. If you hold a sword with both hands, 
hands, it is difficult to wield it freely to left and right. So my method is to carry the sword in one hand. This does not apply to large weapons such as the spear or halberd, but swords and companion swords can be carried in one hand. It is encumbering to hold a sword in both hands when you are on horseback, when running on uneven roads, on swampy ground, muddy rice fields, stony ground, or in a crowd of people. To hold the long sword in both hands is not the true way, for if you carry a bow or spear or other arms in your left hand, you have only one hand free for using the long sword. However, when it is difficult to cut an enemy down with one hand, you must use both hands. It is not difficult to wield a sword in one hand. The way to learn this is to train with two long swords, one in each hand. It will seem difficult at first, but everything is difficult at first. Bows are difficult to draw, halberds are difficult to wield. As you become accustomed to the bow, so your pull will become stronger. When you become used to wielding the longsword, you will gain the power of the way and wield the sword well. As I will explain in the second book, the water book, there is no fast way of wielding the longsword. The longsword should be wielded broadly, and the companion sword closely. This is the first thing to realise. According to this itchy school, you can win with a longsword, and yet you can also win with a short weapon. In short, the way of the itchy school is the spirit of winning, whatever the weapon and whatever its size. It is better to use two swords rather than one when you are fighting in a crowd and especially if you want to take a prisoner. These things cannot be explained in detail. From one thing, no ten thousand things. When you attain the way of strategy, there will not be one thing you cannot see. You must study hard. The benefit of the two characters reading strategy. Masters of the longsword are called strategists. As for the other military arts, those who master the bow are called archers, those who master the spear are called spearmen, those who master the gun are called marksmen, those who master the halberd are called halberdiers. But we do not call masters of the way of the longsword longswordsmen, nor do we speak of companion swordsmen, because bows, guns, spears and halberds are all warriors' equipment. They are certainly part of strategy. To master the virtue of the longsword is to govern the world and oneself. Thus the longsword is the basis of strategy. The principle is strategy by means of the longsword. If he attains the virtue of the longsword, one man can beat ten men. Just as one man can beat ten, so a hundred men can beat a thousand and a thousand men can beat ten thousand. In my strategy, one man is the same as ten thousand, so this strategy is the complete warrior's craft. The way of the warrior does not include other ways, such as Confucianism, Buddhism, certain traditions, artistic accomplishments and dancing. But even though these are not part of the way, if you know the way broadly, you will see it in everything. Men must polish their particular way. The benefit of weapons in strategy. There is a time and place for use of weapons. The best use of the companion sword is in a confined space, or when you are engaged closely with an opponent. The long sword can be used effectively in all situations. The halberd is inferior to the spear on the battlefield. With the spear, you can take the initiative. The halberd is defensive. In the hands of one of two men of equal ability, the spear gives a little extra strength. Spear and halberd both have their uses, but neither is very beneficial in confined spaces. They cannot be used for taking a prisoner. They are essentially weapons for the field. Anyway, if you learn indoor techniques, you will think narrowly and forget the true way. Thus, you will have difficulty in actual encounters. The bow is tactically strong at the commencement of battles, especially battles on a moor, 
as it is possible to shoot quickly from among the spearmen. However, it is unsatisfactory in sieges or when the enemy is more than 40 yards away. For this reason, there are nowadays few traditional schools of archery. There is little use nowadays for this kind of skill. From inside fortifications, the gun has no equal among weapons. It is the supreme weapon on the field before the ranks clash, but once swords are crossed, the gun becomes useless. One of the virtues of the bow is that you can see the arrows in flight and correct your aim accordingly, whereas gunshot cannot be seen. You must appreciate the importance of this. Just as a horse must have endurance and no defects, so it is with weapons. Horses should walk strongly, and swords and companion swords should cut strongly. Spears and halberds must stand up to heavy use. Bows and guns must be sturdy. Weapons should be hardy rather than decorative. You should not have a favourite weapon. To become over-familiar with one weapon is as much a fault as not knowing it sufficiently well. You should not copy others, but use weapons which you can handle properly. It is bad for commanders and troops to have likes and dislikes. These are things you must learn thoroughly. Timing in strategy. There is timing in everything. Timing in strategy cannot be mastered without a great deal of practice. Timing is important in dancing and pipe or string music, for they are in rhythm only if timing is good. Timing and rhythm are also involved in the military arts, shooting bows and guns and riding horses. In all skills and abilities there is timing. There is also timing in the void, there is timing in the whole life of the warrior, in his thriving and declining, in his harmony and discord. Similarly, there is timing in the way of the merchant, in the rise and fall of capital. All things entail rising and falling timing. You must be able to discern this. In strategy, there are various timing considerations. From the outset, you must know the applicable timing and the inapplicable timing and from among the large and small things, and the fast and slow timings, find the relevant timing. First seeing the distance timing, and the background timing. This is the main thing in strategy. It is especially important to know the background timing, otherwise your strategy will become uncertain. You win in battles with the timing in the void, born of the timing of cunning by knowing the enemy's timing and this using a timing which the enemy does not expect. All the five books are chiefly concerned with timing. You must train sufficiently to appreciate all this. If you practice day and night in the above itchy school strategy, your spirit will naturally broaden. Thus is large-scale strategy and the strategy of hand-to-hand -hand combat propagated in the world. This is recorded for the first time in the five books of Ground, Water, Fire, Tradition, Wind, and Void. This is the way for men who want to learn my strategy. Do not think dishonestly. The way is in training. Become acquainted with every art. Know the ways of all professions. Distinguish between gain and loss in worldly matters. Develop intuitive judgment and understanding for everything. Perceive those things which cannot be seen. Pay attention even to trifles. Do nothing which is of no use. It is important to start by setting these broad principles in your heart and train in the way of strategy. If you do not look at these things on a large scale, it will be difficult for you to master strategy. If you learn and attain this strategy, you will never lose even to 20 or 30 enemies. More than anything, to start with, you must set your heart on strategy and earnestly stick to the way. You will come to be able to actually beat men in fights and be able to win with your eye. Also, by training, you will be able to freely control your own body. 
conquer men with your body, and with sufficient training you will be able to beat ten men with your spirit. When you have reached this point, will it not mean that you are invincible? Moreover, in large-scale strategy, the superior man will manage many subordinates dexterously, bear himself correctly, govern the country and foster the people, thus preserving the ruler's discipline. If there is a way involving the spirit of not being defeated to help oneself and gain honour, it is the way of strategy. The second year of Shoho, 1645. The fifth month, the twelfth day. Shinmen Masashi. The Water Book. The spirit of Niten Ichi School of Strategy is based on water, and this water book explains methods of victory as the longsword form of the Ichi School. Language does not extend to explaining the way in detail, but it can be grasped intuitively. Study this book, read a word, then ponder on it. If you interpret the meaning loosely, you will mistake the way. The principles of strategy are written down here in terms of single combat, but you must think broadly so that you can attain an understanding for 10,000 aside battles. Strategy is different from other things in that if you mistake the way even a little, you will become bewildered and fall into bad ways. If you merely read this book, you will not reach the way of strategy. Absorb the things written in this book. Do not just read, memorize, or imitate, but so that you realize the principle from within your own heart, study hard to absorb these things into your body. Spiritual Bearing in Strategy In strategy, your spiritual bearing must not be any different from normal. Both in fighting and in everyday life, you should be determined, though calm. Meet the situation without tenseness, yet not recklessly, your spirit settled, yet unbiased. Even when your spirit is calm, do not let your body relax, and when your body is relaxed, do not let your spirit slacken. Do not let your spirit be influenced by your body, or your body influenced by your spirit. Be neither insufficiently spirited, nor over-spirited. An elevated spirit is weak, and a low spirit is weak. Do not let the enemy see your spirit. Small people must be completely familiar with the spirit of large people, and large people must be familiar with the spirit of small people. Whatever your size, do not be misled by the reactions of your own body. With your spirit open and unconstricted, look at things from a high point of view. You must cultivate your wisdom and spirit, polish your wisdom, learn public justice, distinguish between good and evil, study the ways of different arts one by one. When you cannot be deceived by men, you will have realized the wisdom of strategy. Stance in strategy. Adopt a stance with the head erect, neither hanging down nor looking up nor twisted. Your forehead and the space between your eyes should not be wrinkled. Do not roll your eyes, nor allow them to blink, but slightly narrow them. With your features composed, keep the line of your nose straight with a feeling of slightly flaring your nostrils. Hold the line of the rear of your neck straight, instill vigour into your hairline, and in the same way from the shoulders down through your entire body. Lower both shoulders, and without the buttocks jutting out, put strength into your legs from the knees to the tops of your toes. Brace your abdomen so that you do not bend at the hips. Wedge your companion sword in your belt against your abdomen, so that your belt is not slack. This is called wedging in. In all forms of strategy, it is necessary to maintain the combat stance in everyday life, and to make your everyday stance your combat stance. You must research this well. The gaze in strategy. 
The gaze should be large and broad. This is the twofold gaze, perception and sight. Perception is strong and sight weak. In strategy, it is important to see distant things as if they were close and to take a distance view of close things. It is important in strategy to know the enemy's sword and not to be distracted by insignificant movements of his sword. You must study this. The gaze is the same for single combat and for large scale combat. It is necessary in strategy to be able to look to both sides without moving the eyeballs. You cannot master this ability quickly. Learn what is written here. Use this gaze in everyday life and do not vary it whatever happens. Holding the long sword. Grip the longsword with a rather floating feeling in your thumb and forefinger, with the middle finger neither tight nor slack, and with the last two fingers tight. It is bad to have play in your hands. When you take up a sword, you must feel intent on cutting the enemy. As you cut an enemy, you must not change your grip, and your hands must not cower. When you dash the enemy's sword aside or ward it off, or force it down, you must slightly change the feeling in your thumb and forefinger. Above all, you must be intent on cutting the enemy in the way you grip the sword. The grip for combat and for sword testing is the same. There is no such thing as a man-cutting grip. Generally, I dislike fixedness in both long swords and hands. Fixedness means a dead hand. Pliability is a living hand. You must bear this in mind. Footwork. With the tips of your toes somewhat floating, tread firmly with your heels. Whether you move fast or slow, with large or small steps, your feet must always move as in normal walking. I dislike the three walking methods known as jumping foot, floating foot and fixed steps. So-called yin-yang foot is important to the way. Yin-yang foot means not moving only one foot. It means moving your feet left-right and right-left when cutting, withdrawing or warding off a cut. You should not move one foot preferentially. The five attitudes. The five attitudes are upper, middle, lower, right side and left side. These are the five. Although attitude has these five dimensions, the one purpose of all of them is to cut the enemy. There are none but these five attitudes. Whatever attitude you are in, do not be conscious of making the attitude. Think only of cutting. Your attitude should be large or small according to the situation. Upper, lower and middle attitudes are decisive, Left and right side attitudes are fluid. Left and right attitudes should be used if there is an obstruction overhead or to one side. The decision to use left or right depends on the place. The essence of the way is this. To understand attitude, you must thoroughly understand the middle attitude. The middle attitude is the heart of the attitudes. If we look at strategy on a broad scale, the middle attitude is the seat of the commander, with the other four attitudes following the commander. You must appreciate this. The way of the longsword. Knowing the way of the longsword means we can wield with two fingers the sword that we usually carry. If we know the path of the sword well, we can wield it easily. If you try to wield the longsword quickly, you will mistake the way. To wield the longsword well, you must wield it calmly. If you try to wield it quickly, like a folding fan or a short sword, you will err by using short sword chopping. You cannot cut a man with a longsword using this method. When you have cut downwards with the longsword, lift it straight upwards. When you have cut sideways, return the sword along a sideways path. Return the sword in a reasonable way always stretching the elbows broadly. Wield the sword strongly. This is the way of the longsword. If you learn to use the five approaches of my strategy, 
you will be able to wield a sword well. You must train constantly. The five approaches. The first approach is the middle attitude. Confront the enemy with the point of your sword against his face. When he attacks, dash the sword to the right and ride it. Or, when the enemy attacks, deflect the point of his sword by hitting downwards. Keep your longsword where it is, and as the enemy renews the attack, cut his arms from below. This is the first method. The five approaches are this kind of thing. You must train repeatedly using a longsword in order to learn them. When you master my way of the longsword, you will be able to control any attack the enemy makes. I assure you, there are no attitudes other than the five attitudes of the longsword of Ni To. In the second approach with the longsword, from the upper attitude, cut the enemy just as he attacks. If the All right, guys, that's it for today. Can you go and get to get home? Um, hope you enjoy this uh, reading of the Book of Five Rings by Vox Stoica. And yeah, as long as the sun is going to be shining, I'm going to be out here. So with that, have a great day, guys.